set for left. <laughs> that Bears channel. He's gotten applause. The Bears. <laughs> McFarland Spartan basketball is on the air. Good evening, Spartan Nation, and welcome to McFarland Boys Basketball tonight. My name's Bill the Big K Kather, 70-year-old, two-time cancer survivor. I'm just living the dream still of bringing McFarland youth activities to you. I'll be joined shortly by the golden voice of McFarland Athletics, Mr. John Wells, who will do the play-by-play -play for tonight's ball game, and we're going to do our best to keep this telecast tonight as accurate, informative, and entertaining for your viewing pleasure as possible. Let me first give a few shout outs tonight to those of you watching in Kansas City, Minneapolis, Chicago, Houston, Pennsylvania, California, Arizona, Florida, as well as down in Walworth. Some of you that maybe stayed home there and they're watching on our website, YouTube, McFarland Cable. Welcome into the viewing venue tonight, as well as even my own son down at Columbia, South America watching tonight. So we go worldwide with these. For your information, these games can be viewed four different ways. Some of you tonight might be watching on our local cable channel, 982. Another way of going is to our uh, Village of McFarland website, and there's a link there to get to all past games, so you can view the ball game there, either later tonight, tomorrow, next week, next year, whatever as well as most popular way for us is to view it live streamed, which we're doing right now at our website, which again is YouTube McFarland Cable. And that game, you know, right now we're actually live or you may view it later on this evening or tomorrow, next week, whenever, next year. So for your memories, that's why we do this. Again, while well, I usually continue to do this, uh, the band is playing, but we have no band today. There was no school today as we started our uh, winter holiday break. So as a tribute to Badger Bill Garvey, our legendary coach and <coughs> band director in that, I always like to do the school song. So here's the McFarland School Fight Song. A tribute to you, Badger Bill Garvey. Fight for our Spartans valiant. Fight for our colors brilliant. Fight, fight, McFarland High. Don't let them buy you. Ra, 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 ra. Hail to our Spartans valiant. Hail to our colors brilliant. Though odds be great or small, we're victors overall. Love you, Garve. Gone, but never forgotten. Now, continuing on with my preview of tonight's ball game. Tonight's opponent, the Chiefs of Walworth Bigfoot. Division three school, population of 500. Coached by Mr. Jeff Fenrick. Three and three overall and two and three in seventh place in the Rock Valley Conference coming in tonight. They're led by six foot three inch senior, Logan Eyshide, 17.8 point, point points a game, who we have just understood due to an injury will not be playing tonight, which will definitely hurt their effort tonight. And a six foot seven inch senior, AJ Courier, also averaging 17.8 points a game. So, for your McFarland Spartans, coached by Mr. Jeff Meinholt, Division II school, 707 students, five and two overall, three and two in fifth place in the Rock Valley Conference. They're led by six foot, six inch senior, the Tower of Power, Trayvon Chisholm, averaging 21.7 points a game. Five foot, 10 inch senior, Luke the Rabbit, Witter and the Floor General, averaging 7.1 points a game. And a six foot, two inch senior, Daniel the Wild Thing, Tenius, 18.7 points a game. <coughs> Keys to tonight's ball game. For McFarland, I was, I originally had shut down Eyeshide and Courier, the two man combination, but with Eyeshide out, it'll just be controlling Courier on the inside at 6 7. McFarland also has to limit their turnovers, as well as they need to avoid getting into foul trouble, especially Chisholm, the tower power in the middle. Uh, for the Bigfoot Chiefs, they need to handle McFarland's run and jump full court press, limit their turnovers, and they need to try and slow this McFarland up-tempo style of play down, I believe. So that's kind of a preview, early preview of tonight's ball game. Let me next go, <coughs> excuse me, to our Spartan sponsors. We have Edward Jones, Joe Muting, Gingerbread House Preschool, Nelson's Bus Service, s and Insurance, Steve Garboyle, Schrammel Realty Group, McFarland State Bank, Baker Tilly, Farmers Insurance, Michael Chandler, Angelo's of McFarland, State Farm Insurance, Jim Hartman, 
Dan Chin Homes and InVenture Realty Group, Sparkle Auto Body, Ken's Automotive, Culver's and McFarland, Washaw Construction, Main Moon Chinese Restaurant, Credo Product Development, Matt Splinter Memorial Foundation, Quick Trip, McFarland True Value, Green Lantern Restaurant, the Maple Tree Supper Club, Spartan Bowl, Gunderson Funeral Home, Lake Stone Properties, Luke's Cafe, Tim O'Brien Homes, Renee Bailey, Rosen of Madison, the Little Jim of McFarland, and 608 Threads. And I can tell you what a great long list that is of businesses here in the area that continually not only support McFarland Athletics, but also the school district. So please feel free to use those Spartan sponsors. And when you're in using their services or whatever, give them a big extra thank you for all they do to help support Spartan School District and Spartan Athletics. Next up, I want to give a shout out here to McFarland Cable TV Channel 982 as a function of the Village of McFarland. <coughs> Excuse me, and is producing high school sports as a result of a community survey and fan interest indicating viewers like you at home, as well as fans in attendance, desire this type of programming. I encourage you to inform your village officials by way of an email, a phone call, how much you enjoy these high quality productions. Positive efforts of our McFarland youth deserves to be recognized in all forms of media, the State Journal, the Thistle, <coughs> Cable Channel 982, as well as our website, YouTube, McFarland Cable. So once again, thanks for your support. And again, our staff tonight, got the A-team here tonight on the board. Andrew, the mastermind. A-Day, the bearded wonder, on the board tonight. <coughs> Along with Patrick Hasty, also helping on the board tonight, doing all our graphics and other stuff. And up at half court, in the yellow roped off area up there, so we get perfect views in that. First off is the queen, Stephanie Miller. And sitting to her right would be smiling Ryan Denzer. Back tonight from school and that to kind of help us out tonight. So. All those people helping out, this should be a Class A telecast tonight. As soon as we get done here with our national anthem, which is due up, we're going to ask all, <coughs> all of you at home to please, like we're going to do here, please stand, remove your headgear, put your hand over your heart, and pay tribute to the United States of America, as we are doing right here. And this is Bill the Big K. Kather. Again, I'll be doing the analysis and keeping stats in tonight's game. We'll be back and join with John Wells in just a minute and the opening lineups. So, national anthem, do up.
starting lineups. For the Walworth Bigfoot Chiefs starting lineups. Then we'll get John Wells, the voice of McFarland Athletics. Number 10, Max Hildebrand, <coughs> five foot nine inch senior. Number 20, Aiden Greco, five foot 11 inch senior. Number 32, Jake Trostclair, 5'11", senior. <coughs> number 42, A.J. Courier, 6 foot 7 inch senior. And number 44, Jack Gillingham, a 6 foot 2 inch junior. For your McFarland Spartans. Number 10, C.W. Carson Werwinski. Number 11, the Rabbit, Luke. Twitter, five foot 10 inch senior. Next, the wild thing, Daniel Tenius, six foot two inch senior. The crossing guard, Max Hansen, six foot seven inch junior, probably be on career, match six foot seven in height. And the tower of power, Trayvon Chisholm. So, welcome in, John Wells, the golden voice of McFarland Athletics, John. Bill, it should be a good ball game tonight. Bigfoot three and three on the year. Spartans five and two. Bigfoot without their leading score. Gonna right. see who picks up the offensive output for the group from Walworth, Fontana, and Sharon. <laughs> up here located on the state line for those of you who unfamiliar. And the Spartans get the tip. Witter, long, no good. And Hildebrandt down with the rebound for the Chiefs. And overthrown, and a turnover gives the ball back to the Spartans. Bigfoot generally a uh, pretty physical team. Yep. We'll see uh, if that's the case tonight. Big football teams, usually a football school. So Hildebrandt will guard Witter, that's Chisholm. Loud crowd here tonight, John, huh? Tennis shot blocked by Courier. Here come the Chiefs. Greco called his name a lot in football. Yep. Gillingham is 44, Hildebrandt 10. Greco is 20, guarded by Witter. There's the cutter, Courier. Max Hansen with the block. Crossing guard denying him. And that pass goes about five <coughs> rows up into the bleachers. Fans, you gotta be watching the game. Somebody almost took it in the head over there. <laughs> Oh my. Boy, Max Hansen saying, hey, not time for you to get into this uh, crossing guard saying, don't come into this intersection yet. <coughs> this is me. Gillingham reverse layup, no good. Hansen with the rebound. Minute in, nobody scored yet. Got plenty of lead left in my pencil, John. <laughs> I haven't had to write anything down yet. Witter, spin move. That's going to be a tie up. Possession arrow goes to Bigfoot. Spartans again, full court pressure. Hoping that maybe we can see a basket out of the Spartan squad. We sat here on a couple nights ago and watched the girls in score a basket until there were two minutes left in the first half. So the boys can improve on that. Chisholm tips it away, still not over. And another turnover. Looks like the press might bother them a little bit here, John. Yeah, a little different. Uh, eye side probably out of there too. That's and a little different matchup than against Evansville for us. Right. Again, Bigfoot three and three on the season. Two and three in the conference so far. Hanson, no good. Chisholm tries for the rebound. Greco down for the Chiefs. Good all round athlete, isn't he, John? And another turnover. Three turnovers for Bigfoot out of four possessions. Not a good start for Coach Fenrick's Chiefs. But the Spartans haven't capitalized either here. Carson Werwinski, the senior, number 10. Witter into Hanson, tipped away by Courier. Three shot on the way by Tenius is short. Gillingham with the board up ahead to Greco. Who's gonna score first? <laughs> 32 is Jacob Trosclair. That's the first time he's touched the ball. 
Gillingham at the elbow, kicks it back out, Trostler. Hildebrandt thought about it from three. Greco on the drive, over Chisholm, no good, rebound Tenius. And here come the Spartans. Tenius guarded by Greco. Wierwinski, skip pass. Tenius, long, no good, rebound. Hildebrandt, here comes Bigfoot. To the cutter, tipped away by Hansen. Up ahead, winner layup is good. Spartans on the board, two to nothing. Bill, it took three minutes to get our first basket. Yep. I said this would be a fast moving game before we went on the air. Cross Claire, Gillingham, right in front of us, guarded by Hansen. Correction, that was Courier. Gillingham. A lot of movement. A lot of movement. Yeah, running that offense. Yep. Yeah, that's going to be a block. I believe it'll go on Witter. Nope, it'll go on Carson Warwinski. First foul of the game. Three and a half minutes in. Augustus Foster will come in. Freshman, the one lonely freshman on their squad, John. 6-1 in a freshman. Yep, 11 seniors, two juniors, and a freshman on this broadhead chief, or I'm sorry, on this Walworth Bigfoot chief squad this year. 4.20 to go. Well, Greco loses his balance. Said something to the official. Yeah, he was a little dismayed with that. Thought he kind of got uh, tripped up there on his drive to the basket, but not in the official's eyes. Yep. Pretty obvious travel. And Witter's pass was tipped, goes out of bounds. Bigfoot tries to save it in front of the Spartan crowd. Unable to do so, so McFarland will inbound from the sideline. What'd you say, John? Very nice Friday night crowd here tonight. Nice crowd. Good to see uh, ugly sweater night in the student section. Yep. Here's Tenius on the drive, off his leg, out of bounds, another turnover. Coach Meinholt going to the bench right away. He's not happy with what he's seeing here. Jeremiah Price Johnson, number two. Pete Pavlik, number five. Well, Bill, I can say this, that turnovers have tripled the points produced tonight yes. in this game. Yep. About six turnovers to two points. And just as I said that, another turnover. Yep. Wawinski to Pavlik. Hansen was open. Nice move. Off the Max. back of the iron, no good. Max, I really like this. He's gotten a lot more aggressive, John, in the games that we've seen here on the offensive end. I like to see that out of Max. Got to finish. Three by Hildebrandt, no good. Nice rebound there by Foster. That ball is blocked. Rejected by the crossing guard, Max. Pavlik goes up with a shot. Just That's long. Pete, no good. Chisholm yet to get a shot. The Mad Bomber, JPJ, no good. We're almost five minutes into the game. Oh my goodness. Another steal, here comes Trayvon on the break, goes up off the glass, no good. Long rebound to Jeremiah Price. Johnson up no good, but a foul. Bill, we've gone almost five minutes here. We have two points. Foul's gonna be on Jack Gillingham. I'm just letting the picture on the screen tell the story here. There's yeah, much to say. We're just trying to make it exciting. <laughs> Jeremiah hits the free throw. In for Christian Carabas in for Bigfoot number 12 and for the Spartans number 14, the sophomore Jackson Werwinski. Jeremiah at the line. Second free throw is good. Four nothing Spartans. And tipped away by Pavlik, almost saved. Good hustle by the sophomore. Spartans pitching a shutout here, Bill. Almost five minutes in, 13.02. Aiden Greco, and, and into the crowd, Paul Ackley with a nice catch. 
I just got to believe, yep, and here finally comes a timeout from Coach Fenrick. Uh, just got to settle the kids down here a little bit, John. This is, <laughs> Well, wow. like Bigfoot's going to take, uh, I believe it was Bigfoot timeout, a 30-second timeout. Yes, it timeout. was. Yep. So. Boy, I'll tell you, this press is just smothering, but I got to believe that uh, Logan Eyshide, their leading scorer, and that a six-foot-three-inch senior, what a difference it makes to not have him on the floor. And because I'll tell you what, you put a kid with that kind of experience and ability and that and with that height out there, you make all the difference in the world, especially breaking a full court press like this. So. Struggle, but that's where you got to count on these other kids. And that's where it goes back to, I say again, practice time. Boy, you better practice hard because you never know when your number is going to be called up and you're playing a full game like tonight. That's right. There's somebody out here that's not used to starting in that. And there's a spin by Trayvon around and in, 6 nothing Spartans. And I got to believe they may really start going inside more to Trayvon here to uh, work the middle. And the press. Double and triple teaming whenever possible. You risk giving up an easy one on the other end, yep. but it hasn't cost the Spartans at all. Yep, Spartans are really in this. Uh, Greco from three, good. Oh, kaboom. Aiden Greco with my first three. Kaboom ball, a five foot 11 inch senior, averaging eight points a game. And boy, he's gonna be counted on tonight, big time by Walworth that they're gonna be in this contest. Trayvon, no good, gets his own rebound back up and scores. They do not have an answer, I don't think, for Trayvon's uh, Size and abilities on the inside here tonight. So McFarland can be patient, get it into him. A lot of success on the inside, I think, tonight for Trayvon. Averaging 21 point some points a game. Yeah, if they get it inside to him, that, that free throw is long. If they get it inside to him, he's going to be awfully tough to stop. Awfully tough. And if not, just to kick it back out, and somebody's going to be sitting there alone. Greco, Courier. To Greco, guarded by Austin Miller in the game. And this one rolls out of bounds. It'll go to McFarland. Yep. Or to Bigfoot. Austin Miller, I've been waiting to use this. A.M. in the P.M. He likes to play all day long. Austin Miller, A.M. in the P.M. All day long. That's great. <laughs> Just as much, as much fun uh, two nights ago with Maddie Wheel of Fortune. New nicknames this year. Hey, another turnover. Yep. Bigfoot approaching double figures for turnovers I, here. Yeah. And we aren't even halfway through the first half. Credit the Spartans, though, really turned Kesky. up the defense. Yep. Three for Johnson. High, no good. Hits the strap. Yep. Why you construct a basketball hoop that's got a strap directly above the cylinder is beyond me. Right, I'll finish that. <laughs> no one asked us though, I guess, nope. so. so. This is Christian Carabas, almost trapped in the corner. Boy, you just can't put your head down, you gotta keep your head up, and as soon as you see the double coming, you gotta reverse that ball. Man. Nice play. To Courier. Beautiful do ball movement that time, but boy, they had to keep their head up and keep that ball moving quickly. Well, Bill, it's 8-5. Despite the turnovers for Bigfoot, they come down the court with a chance to tie. Yep. Oh. oh, look at the cutter. Nobody close. Brock Schoenbeck. Yep, the five foot eight inch senior. Well, you trail the cutter. It doesn't take the coach long to keep running that and if you get behind the cutter you're either going to get a foul or give up a basket or one of your teammates has got to come over and help and they usually wind up picking up the foul so this has really been interesting John because it seems like McFarland had an excellent opportunity to put a ton of distance early on in this game between themselves and the Chiefs of Walworth Bigfoot but this shows what happened if you get a little sloppy yourself and you don't stay intense and just got a little lazy on defense, get picked a couple times and easy layups. And like I said, I, I'm, I'm sure most people sitting here are going eight to seven after 
probably almost double digit turnovers. Well, and, and Bigfoot change. runs their offense well. <coughs> yes, they do, and it's continual movement, all five guys, motion, and boy, you're just waiting for that one guy to get a little lazier to get screened, and layup time. Jeremiah Price Johnson on the drive, over to Chisholm, double team, finger roll no good, tries to put it back up, no good, ball loose, and we are screened here. Yep. It'll go to the Spartans. That's time when we gotta look at the monitor instead the of. monitor, yep. <laughs> So Jeremiah Price Johnson will inbound it directly in front of the Bigfoot bench. Good crowd from Bigfoot here making the trip yep. up. Friday night, well they we probably enjoy a trip up to Madison area in that time on a Friday evening. Yep, and there's Curry gonna be Curry on yeah, the Yeah, got caught around. behind. Yep. You know, he didn't need to reach around either because he's got Chisholm. Well, that pass has got to be a little sharper, too. And right. Trayvon kind of waited for that ball to get there. Right. Hansen. He's kind of got him pushed out a little far in the corner there where that was a little unnecessary right there. I agree with you. Hansen and Tenius back in for the Spartans. And steal. Easy pass. On the inbound. Greco will bring it up. And here it comes right to us. Off Bill's hands. Bad hands, huh? And I had a turnover. <laughs> it's a turnover, turnover on, on day, the huh? Turnover, turnover on the there. staff. <laughs> oh. And again, like up. we said, despite the number of turnovers, Spartans only with a one-point advantage here. Yep. Max Hansen up. No good. Here come the Chiefs with a chance to take the lead. Again, oh, the cutter stolen man. away. Werwinski, nice drive and off the glass for Jackson. Werwinski is first yep. two. Spartans lead 10 7. Six foot, one inch sophomore. Comes Hildebrandt. Nope, gonna wave it off. Foul's gonna be called on Max Hansen, his first. Team second, only five team fouls total here so far. And that ball is thrown right to Ethan Nichols. He's gonna go all the way and overlay oh, it completely. And here we come the other way. Foster, nope. no good. My and there's gonna be goodness. a foul. My, oh my, oh my. I'm just kind of letting the picture tell no. uh, the words here. I, oh my, that's probably one of the worst 30 <laughs> seconds you'll see in basketball there. Ball was thrown Sloppy. right to Nichols. We missed the layup on the other end. They miss it down here. Right. But as a result of the foul on Ethan Nichols, Brock Schoenbeck, 5'8 senior, goes to the line. Score now is 10 to eight. 9.05 to go here in the first half. I can just use one word for this. It's just sloppy, John. Well, that was a little short. A little short? Like not even front of the rim short. Ooh, now Walworth coming back with a little full court pressure. Just to change it up a little bit. You know, I've always kind of liked that, John, when, uh, when a coach changes things up throughout the game and that. Just give a little different look at times. Tenius from three, good. Kaboom! 13-8. Tenius, a six foot two inch senior, averaging 18.7 points a game, knocking down the three ball. Almost a Boy. steal in the backcourt. Yep. And it is a steal, Warwinski. Boy, you. You gotta come and meet the ball when the ball is passed to you. Trayvon. Boy, good hustle there by Foster. Charging. Oh, now they got to call the travel first. Boy, Schoenbeck stayed right in there on Why that one. Why he did. That takes a little courage, doesn't it, John? Shortest huh? player on the court. Yep. Tough kid. Get a special hello to our fans in Walworth, Fontana, and Sharon. If you're watching live or on YouTube. Yep. YouTube. In the future. McFarland Cable. Yep, you can watch this game 
tonight, tomorrow, next week, next year, John, in the archives. We go back, I believe, about four years on the... Uh... Well, there's a steal. Tenius lays it in with the left hand, draws the foul. Spartans on a run. And again, classic mistake right there. Jumping in the air to pass the ball. You cannot leave the floor. The only time you leave the floor is to rebound. And outside of that, not, no good things happen if you're jumping, jumping up. Because once you leave the floor, it's goodbye time or a foul or whatever. Hildebrandt, the foul, his second, team's fourth. Tennis at the line for the three-point play, the old-fashioned way, and that goes down. The old-fashioned three-point play. Boy, this pressure is just killing Bigfoot here. Just got to get rid of that ball, keep your head up, and there's another. Bill, they're going to go over 20, I think, in the first half. Just got a hunch. Here comes Carabas. Oh, lays it back to Courier. Tipped out of bounds. 16-8, Spartans by eight. To beat this press, you gotta space it, have a person in the middle, as well as when you see the double coming, you gotta get rid of it right away. They're putting the ball on the floor, putting their head down and trying to dribble, or they're holding on to that ball too long. Well, another second time in a row, they've inbounded underneath their own basket and thrown it away. Yep. But we do the same going yeah, so the other go way. on the other end and throw it away. Not a thing of beauty, John, huh? Statistician Les Haynes says <laughs> we are over a combined 20 turnovers. <laughs> Courier with the left hand, good, nice touch. 16-10. AJ's second deuce of the night, averaging 17.8 points a game for the 6-7 senior. Sure, he's missing Logan Eishide out here also again tonight. They both averaged 17.8 points a game. Tenius with a hard drive to the basket, draws the foul. He'll go to the line to shoot a pair. Aiden Greco called a lot of these Bigfoot names during the football season. Yep. Hope you people enjoyed our football telecast this last year. 17-10 with that made free throw. Two for two from the stripe tonight so far. To go along with a deuce and a tray. And 18-10. Got a hunch the Spartans are gonna make a run here, close out the half big. Near steal in the backcourt. And a trip. You know, and that's always one of the issues of this, uh, this press get people in fall trouble real quick on this, especially if you're not playing with your feet, John. That's two on Carson yep. Orwinski. He'll head to the bench. There's that cutter wide open. Boy, they cut from the weak side and nobody near Trosclair. Here's Werwinski on the drive, Chisholm. Corner, Tenius from three. In and out, no good. The John Wells honeycomb. Honeycomb. And again, the double Jumps. team, near steal. Here and comes. again, there was the passer jumping in the air and then going, where am I going with it? You got nowhere to go and your feet are on the floor. on the floor. Trayvon Chisholm with the foul is first. Team fouls even at five. And then Tross Claire, number 32. Boy, I, I am gonna say this Spartan defense tonight is smothering, John. They are very aggressive. But again, that allows for some backdoor cuts or you can get the back screen real easily on this stuff if you're playing that high and that aggressive. Greco off the glass, rebound Spartans. Here they come, Jeremiah Price Johnson. And a beautiful pass from Witter. The Rabbit getting out quick and making a great assist. 
to JPJ. Spartans have doubled it up, 20 to 10. Trostler somehow got through. Corner Greco from three, good. Kaboom! Aiden Greco's second three and a timeout by Coach Meinl. Greco with two trays on the night. I think that so might have been a Bigfoot timeout. Think so? Maybe. I think it might have been. 20 to 13, Greco with a couple of threes. John, hey, got a little uh, quiz thing here for all you people at home to try, and even for you sitting here next to my right, John. Somebody used this to me in a restaurant the other night, so I thought I'd bring this along since it's Christmas season. You have 78 Christmas presents, okay? I don't know whoever gets 78 Christmas presents. I sometimes, some years thought we gave that many to our two boys, but I'm sure some of you think you overbuy, <laughs> but okay, you have 78 Christmas presents. Now, from 78, subtract your age. Now, add 40 to that number, and that's gonna be the year that you were born. Is that correct, John Wells? It is. Yes, it is. So I hope those of you at home try that. 78 Christmas presents. Subtract your age from it. Add 40. And that's the year you were born. So whoever came up with that, I don't know. Except for those fans 79 and over. over. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see how that would. You'd have to go back into the... Uh, well, that's interesting now. I'm going to use that one at school. Tennis from Price Johnson. Ten points for the wild thing, Daniel Tennis. Two deuces, a tray, and three for three from the stripe. I believe he's going to call a double foul here. It looks like we're a little too. It is. So Jeremiah Price Johnson and Aiden Greco. Jeremiah's Greco Johnson first. from football field, maybe a little. Uh, yeah. They were out there laughing and kind of talking about it. So, Coach Mino probably doing the right thing. Gets the JPJ out. You know, you got to focus on playing basketball. We out got there. a couple kids out there. They kind of like talking. Here's Greco. Yep. That's oh, yeah. long. Nice box out by Max Hansen. Yep. Yeah. Nice ball game so far tonight. Crossing guard Max Hansen. Special shout out to the Hervats in Houston. Watching Max tonight. Gillingham to the rack, no good. Boy, and there's the Max board. on the follow up, nice hustle. Boy, Gillingham was worried about Chisholm rejecting that shot. Just a little too strong on the kiss off the glass. Tennis from three, no good. Chisholm with the rebound, up off the glass, good. Oh, a strong move by Trayvon, his third deuce of the night, six points. 24-13. Carabas, Gillingham. Kind of like saying that name, don't you? Carabas. Carabas. Tipped away, Tenius has got it in the corner, running out of room. Oh, went through it. And Carabas from Courier. 24-15. Tough save when you throw it back towards the other yep. team's basket. And again, where was he? Up in the air. Lay in by Tenius on the other end. 12 points, three deuces, a tray, and three free throws. Max Hansen. Oh, and the fact he tipped it out means they're gonna get a fresh 10, bring it across. But the shot clock continues. Oh, that's right. No shot clocks yet. Nope. Spacing. Spacing and a man in the middle. Three, nearing the 340 mark. Interesting. Now they brought Chisholm up on the top in this. Uh, looks like a 1 3 1. Bank shot. Oh, Gillingham off the glass. The kiss. For Jack Gillingham, the six foot two inch junior, his first deuce of the night. Trayvon to the rack, draws the foul. Boy, you better not relax in these games because boy, these kids want to get the ball in and go. Gillingham picks up the foul, his second, team seventh. Trayvon will go to the line to shoot two. 
The lead is nine for the Spartans with 3.27 to go in the first half. That is short. He's 0 for 2 from the stripe tonight. He got three deuces, six points, averaging 21 points, some points a game. So. Second one is good, and the lead is 10 for the Spartans. Yeah, Bigfoot starting to look a little more diagonal now on their passes. Yep. Yep. Made some adjustments. And Trayvon out top. Looks like a 1 2 2 almost, Bill. Courier. Foster up high. Oh, boy, did he go high. Augustus Foster, number 40, just a freshman. Boy, did he get off the ground yeah. on that, huh? He went up over the six foot seven inch Max yeah, Hansen. It was to way get up. That. Max with the foul is second, the team's seventh. Gilliam's free throw is no good. Four for seven from the stripe coming into the night's game from the free throw line. Pavlik and Nichols back in, 2.55. Time to go. Gillingham, it's a second. That's good. So the lead is nine for the Spartans. Tenniel still walk it up. Tenius, Chisholm, good. That's just, we have such a size mismatch on the inside, just really tough on, uh, there again is where Walworth really misses a six foot three inch ice side. Again, inside I'm sure. And back to man to man for the Spartans. Just threw that zone out there for a couple of possessions. Yep. 29-18. Gillingham goes to the hoop. Gets the roll. Strong play. Two deuces and a free throw, five points. Somehow he dribbles through two Spartans to do it. Yep. It looks like Bigfoot may have gone zone here. Tip. Another lazy pass. Chisholm, short. Courier up high for the rebound. And this will result in free throws for Bigfoot. Trayvon Chisholm again. Foul in the backcourt, not what you need. Oh. Derek Schwarting will come in, number zero. 29-20, eighth team foul on the Spartans. And Max Hildebrandt, senior, 5'9", will go to the line to shoot one and one. That's good. first point of the evening. Bill, I don't know if it's our pressure has let up a little bit or Bigfoot's controlling the ball a little better because we're not seeing as many turnovers. Right. Aaron Nielsen, a 6-4 senior in for Bigfoot. And he's got them both. Schoen back back in, Hildebrandt out. And I'll tell you, they have not allowed uh, McFarland to pull away here, John. Nope. nope they're just kind of hanging around a little bit. So again, Luke Witter back in the game, number 11, over to Pavlik. Witter, good from three. Come on! A rabbit, Luke Witter, a three and a deuce, five points in your first half. Trap on the side, almost a steal. Greco good, 32-24. Nice yeah. Deuce and two trays for eight points for him, his season average here in the first half. You know, the Spartans do a good job on that trap, it's just we're not rotating over to take that next right. pass. Yep. Just a step slow. 
nearing the 30 second mark. Pavlik gonna go up, that's way long. My goodness, that was probably ill-advised, did you say, John? Here comes Bigfoot and that goes to Paul Ackley again. 27.7. Coach Fenrick, you know, not hollering, just still encouraging his kids to play harder than that. Very calm over Gotta there. Gotta like that, yep. Good approach, I mean, I think the reality of it is too, he understands he's playing a little undermanned here tonight and uh, kids are hanging in there, doing a pretty decent job, I'd say. Spartans should go for one here with 20 seconds to go in the half with an eight point lead. Emphasis on the word should. You well, never you, know in high school athletics. If you got an easy one, take it. Winner kicks it out. Tenius, no good. Long rebound chased down by Schwarting. Got to get a shot off. Ball goes out of bounds and time runs out. Has expired in our first half. John, I'm going to let you close it off here. We're going to step out at halftime here tonight. And, uh, any final comments you have? And outside of that, we'll be back in about uh, eight minutes for the second half. Well, one half in the books here. It's McFarland 32, Bigfoot 24, 18 minutes to go in this one. We'll be back after this short break.
All right, this is Bill Big K Kather back with John Wells for the second half of tonight's ball game. Here's the scoring rundown from the first half for your McFarland Spartans. Trayvon Chisholm, nine. Daniel Wilding Tenius, 12. Luke the Re Witter, five. Jeremiah Price Johnson, four. Jackson Werwinski, two. And that is it for your first half scoring for your Spartans and for the Chiefs of Walworth Bigfoot. H.J. Courier with six. Aiden Greco with eight. Max Hildebrand, two. Jack Gillingham with five. And Brock Schoenbach with three points. So, John, see what kind of adjustments maybe uh, Coach Fenrick made with the uh, Chiefs at halftime to maybe a few less turnovers against this pressure, full court pressure. And it's only an eight point game. Spartans yes, start with possession. And again, we might remind our viewers that Logan Eyshide, uh, one of the two top players for Walworth Bigfoot, one of their leaders is not playing this evening, so. Nice move by Trayvon. Long rebound to Werwinski. Tenius back out. Carson Werwinski from three is good. Carson Werwinski. Kaboom for CW, the five foot, 10 inch senior. That's Carson the way Werwinski. to start the half. Yes, it is. Greco to the hole. Over Chisholm, no good. Rebound Hansen. Again, failure to use the backboard. I always just. Don't understand why kids don't use it. It's up there for a reason. Max Hansen with a, he's got to have at least a half a dozen rebounds. Yeah, rebounds, here. yes he does. Witter from three, good. And kaboom! Back to back trays. 38, 24, 14 point lead. Two trays and a deuce for Witter. Right, eight points. Good start for McFarland. Yep, excellent start. Again, we trail that cutter coming through the lane. And Max Hansen picks up the foul as third. Jeremiah Price Johnson is in. Chiefs will inbound underneath their own basket. Courier wide open, no good. Rebound Tenius. And here comes McFarland looking to increase their lead, which right now is 14. Jeremiah Price Johnson. Again, Bigfoot giving up two threes here to start. Goes high inside, Chisholm off the glass. Own rebound, no good. Calling for the foul, but it's not gonna work. And Courier beats him down the floor, but Chisholm gets it back. To Jeremiah Price Johnson, up and overlays. Good follow by Tenius. 40-24. Nice follow by Daniel Tenius on that. Gillingham, short, own rebound, good. 40-26. His third deuce of the night for six points with a free throw for seven for Jack. Six foot two inch junior. Again, Bigfoot switched to that zone. Take away the inside play, but it's allowed us to get a couple of threes, and Tenius, no good. Good box out there by Jacob Trosclair, and Bigfoot will bring it down. Again, left his feet. Just can't do that in offense, or defense for that matter. No. Nope. Tenius. Kicks it out, Luke Witter, three on the way. Long, no good. 15 minute mark, lead is 14. Greco, Trosclair, no good. Chisholm rebound, Tenius, here come the Spartans. Tenius to the hoop, spin move off the glass, short, no good. Just short armed it a little bit there. A lot of running up and down the court, but no nobody, results. nobody <laughs> cashing in. No. Courier, back of the iron, no good. Chisholm again with the rebound. Witter, Werwinski. That was just beautiful, the way that Luke Witter kept his head up and saw Werwinski coming down the backside, beautiful, and threaded Second that time in there. 
Second time, or second or third time, Luke has threaded the needle on that pass. Yep, beautiful, beautiful assist. Carson Warwinski whistled for the foul, his third, Spartans second team foul this half. Sometimes, John, like tonight, we've just had to let the viewers sit and watch the screen because there's just so much back and forth and turnovers and quick play. It's hard to call all this stuff. <laughs> and especially, it's just it's a lot like of a, mistake, mistake, mistake. It's up and down like a hockey game. Yep. Greco, Gillingham, number 44, and turnover. Yep, pass to nobody. Spartans now with a chance to take their biggest lead. Austin Miller is four. Werwinski, no good. Chisholm off the glass and good. Fifth deuce of the night for the free throw. 11 points for Trayvon. Lead is now 18 for the Spartans. Whoa, Courier, good from three. Oh, boom, A.J. Courier, three ball. This, wow. The southpaw. Yep. Lead is 15. Does that mean a righty is a northpaw, John? I've asked that question before. If we have southpaw as lefty. Oh, nice block by oh, Courier. Oh, boy, was that beautiful. And you notice that he did not leave his feet all during that time and guarding Chisholm there. Trayvon put about three moves on him and he was still able to kind of reject it there at the end with good, good footwork that time. Bigfoot trying to hang in there. Courier thought he was gonna go up with it. He's feeling it out there. Yep. <laughs> at six, seven, yep. Greco. Good defense by the Spartans. Long possession here for the Chiefs. And loose ball. Augustus Foster around and out. Courier with the rebound, no good, but Werwinski gonna be whistled for the foul. Courier going to the strike. 19 for 30, 63% on the year for AJ. Lead for the Spartans is 15, again AJ Courier, Austin Courier. Well, shot is good. High arcing shot, doesn't he, Jen? Three deuces, a tray, and a free throw. He's at 10 points so far. Season average 17.8, and that will give him 11 on the evening. 44 31. Oh, off Jeremiah's leg, out of bounds. Turnover gives the ball to Bigfoot. Hey, they can cut it to 10 on this possession. We're gonna call him again. It's Greco and JPJ again. P.J. back out of the game again. Yeah, both Greco and Jeremiah Price Johnson come out. Yep. Again, you want the focus to be on basketball and not on running your mouth and. Yeah, like I said, those two have been kind of jawing back and forth. Yep. Oh, nice oh. move. By but. Hildebrandt. <laughs> Witter to Werwinski, another assist for Luke Witter. Jackson Werwinski was the benefactor of that. A hoop and a hack. Yep, Luke Witter tonight just really doing a nice job on the from the assist standpoint tonight. A rabbit. 46-31. Always on the move, but the great part about tonight is Luke keeping his head up and staying a little better under control. Sometimes he gets a little too Overactive, that motor just runs a little too quick. They barely get it across. Here's Carabas gonna go all the way, Whoa. lay it all off the glass and score. Boy, the Bigfoot fans on their feet. Christian Carabas, the five foot nine inch senior. 
And the kiss off the glass and the chance for the old-fashioned three-point play. Somehow he was able to take <laughs> it to the hoop. <laughs> wow. I didn't know from my angle. I, he kind of got lost in the pack going down there. And then at the end, he kind of split a couple people. And somehow the next thing I saw was the ball off the backboard. <laughs> Bigfoot takes a hey. short time out here. Trivia question here for chores or whatever else. Four answers. What is the diameter of a basket rim? What is the diameter of a basket rim? Is it 21 inches, 15 inches, 13 inches, or 18 inches? Is it 21, 15, 13, or 18 inches? The diameter of a basket. Pam Sam says 21. John Wells. 18. Says 18. The correct answer is 18 inches. Pam Sam, take a seat. <laughs> I just took whatever number was in the middle. So it's, <laughs> I never knew that. So that's. Well, gotta have a little fun with this. Except uh -huh. when you go to the carnival and they have those basketball games. That's true. Then it's about uh, 13, I right. would think. <laughs> Oh, nice move by Luke. Winner, count it. Oh, highlight film there for Luke. Nice little ball fake as he hit the basket, draw the defender away, and the up and under, and the kiss off nice, the glass. Nicely done. Free throw around and in, the lead is 17. Chiefs need to get Greco back in the game. Again, I'm going to say this again tonight. Luke's a little more under control tonight. He's got a motor that just, boom. And Bigfoot breaks the press. Clint McFarland does have a lot of foot speed out there, too. You put, uh, I call him the mosquito, Ethan Nichols out there from soccer. I mean, he'll just pester you all night long. He can run with you all night long. And I believe they're going to whistle tennis. Yeah, got him with the hands, the shove. Official just happened to be looking right at that when it happened. Yep. A lot of times you get away with that, but. A lot of hand checking, John. It's been a well officiated game. I agree, I agree. And they've done a nice job because when there has been some extra activity, they've stopped it. They haven't whistled anybody for any fouls or something, but it's just gentlemen. Let's play basketball here, well, and fouls, that's the right approach to Fouls take. now, Bill, becoming an issue. That's on Witter. We have six already here. That's going to extend the length of our game tonight, John. Courier traveled, shuffled the feet. We had an 8.20 ET, what should I say, estimated time of end of game, ETEG. ETC. <laughs> oh, end of... Estimated time of completion Play and Nichols shuff, shuffles his feet. Yep. Oh, and then you see the little soccer move, the little backward bump with the ball. Well, fortunately, on his. he didn't get a technical on that. If that ball would have gone flying, he would have been whistled. Yep. Yep. I don't know what the soccer move, <laughs> proper terminology for that little uh, back heel kick was, it would be. but Yeah, the officials don't take kindly if you kick the ball after a, after a violation. Oh. So... And that one is overthrown. Jackson Werwinski up ahead, Witter. Hanson, Werwinski, Carson Werwinski. Give a target, Max, if you're in the lane. Jackson Werwinski, Carson Werwinski fights for it. It goes off Gillingham. Max Hildebrandt in for Bigfoot. Here comes Brock Schoenbeck. Name Schoenbeck's been around for a few years in Bigfoot basketball. On the girls' side, Max Hansen off the glass oh, and good. Nice touch. Do I like that? You know why, John. That was a kiss off the glass. He's got to keep those hands up, give that target, and. And going to be a trip that's going to be whistled on Tenius. 
And with 10 minutes to go and a 19 point lead, the Spartans are sending Bigfoot to the line for the bonus. Chiefs will take that, score yep. with the clock stop. That one brackets, no good. So it doesn't cost the Spartans. Oh. Tenius guarded by Greco. High feed, Hansen. Tenius from five, no good. Tenius own rebound, blocked by Courier. Comes Bigfoot. Greco to the hole. Block, no call. He wants a call. Tenius. Tenius on the third effort. Of course, he didn't have far to run on that one. He was down here on the baseline when the ball was on the other end. So yep. here comes Greco. This time he'll draw the foul. Max Hansen, that's gonna be number four on Max, the eighth team foul. So Aiden Greco, the senior, will shoot a pair. First one is no good. 0 for two from the stripe tonight. Chisholm and Pavlik in, Gillingham in for Bigfoot. And John Wells, Bill Cather having a great time here tonight. Happy holidays to all of our viewers. And again, a big thanks to our top-notch crew Staff doing tonight. all the work. Yep. Got the mastermind, Andrew A. Day on the board in the graphics tonight. Chisholm up, count it. He's being assisted by Mr. Patrick. Hasty tonight, two guys doing an excellent job on the board with the score and the clock, graphics, and sitting high atop the McFarland Gymnasium, way, way up there in the yellow tape, roped off area. Smiling Ryan Denzer, and then Steve and Shelley's favorite daughter, the queen, Stephanie Miller. So hello to the proud parents, Steve and Shelley up in Wausau. Hope you're enjoying tonight's telecast. I know at times this even resembles a hockey game out here. So Steve, you should probably be getting some, uh, maybe some good footage that you could use. I know it appears this is a basketball court, but boy, it's a lot of, a lot of checking and a lot of hands-on and you name it. So give you some great hockey feeds here from McFarland, Wisconsin tonight in the form of a basketball game. But anyways, thanks again. Your daughter just does a wonderful, wonderful job. That's why we call her the queen, Stephanie Miller. Well, Bigfoot takes the timeout yep. after Carson Wawinski appeared to get a steal. Lead is 23 with 8.33 to go here in the second half. Hasn't been a thing of beauty, has it, John? This has been just kind of Yeah, but we'll, we'll take sloppy. a win here. Oh, yeah, it's for sure. Got a big one coming up a week from tonight, and you're going to have to really turn it up and have your bring your best game to Monona Grove Monona for Grove. both the boys and the girls. December 28th, I believe it's a, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you'll have to check it out, but I believe a 5 15 start maybe for the girls game. That's a double header, so. Followed by the boys varsity game right after that about seven o'clock. So it'll be a, it's always a nice night, John, to put the boys and the girls together, two communities, because there's so many people in McFarland that uh, went to school in the Monona area or taught in the Monona schools like yours truly did here. And so I have. Now, Bill, you taught for how many mixed years? Mixed alliances. Taught for 30 years in Monona. Three years down at Palmyra Eagle. Well tipped in the backcourt, Jeremiah Price Johnson blocked by Gillingham. Taught 33 years and coached 42 years, John. So 42. A long time. That huh? means we have we have almost 
over you 60 said. years of coaching experience and over almost six, about the same amount of teaching experience yep. between the two of us. You are correct. Unbelievable, the wealth of knowledge that's sitting at this table, huh? Yeah, I talk about we, we've coached a lot of basketball. Yes, and we have. Maybe not recently, but. Trayvon knocks down the free throw, puts the lead up to 22 for four from the line. There's Coach Meinholt. Yep. Coach Feldner on his right with the win tonight in the JV game. Second free throw, no good. Tenius up off the glass. Chisholm with the rebound, the put back. Just too much size that the Spartans have underneath tonight. The lead is 26. And there again, there's that little lob pass. Boy, you just, and you gotta come and meet it. Nice job by Greco and the follow by Courier. 60-36. Fourth deuce of the night to go with a tray and two free throws. 13 points for AJ. Jeremiah Price Johnson goes to the basket, draws the foul. That's Greco's third. Those two going at it hard. Yep. Jeremiah, good free throw shooter. It's the first. Three for three on the night, John. Go Foster, and Foster and Tross player in for Bigfoot. Derek Schwarting for Air Schwarting. the Spartans. The captain that led Air Schwarting on the football field this year. John, it was fun watching that. Very entertaining football season. Great fall season for all McFarland sports. Yes, it was. Runner up state swimming, runner up in soccer. And that's through the hands of Schoenbeck out of bounds. Cross country, Andrew Ponke took second place in Division II individual. Yeah, one of our best fall sports seasons in a long time. Oh. Pavlik, yeah, going to get called for the offensive foul. I, no, I never understand why a kid puts his hand up like, why me? I mean. Well, it looked worse than it did. Yeah, because you're right. A good, little good acting he's job. Got, he's got his arm out, and the defender's kind of <laughs> off balance. And hard for the officials not to call that, though. Because okay, so everybody we, sees that one. And, yeah. But whether he made contact or not, I don't think it was it was as bad as it was. No, looked. no, it wasn't like anybody <laughs> was it's not like anybody was gonna get hurt on that, yeah. then, Jen. I don't think we needed anything like concussion protocol <laughs> or anything on yeah. that. There again, the cutter's open. Augustus Foster, 62-38. Six foot one inch freshman. Foster almost a steal. Pavlik shot on the way for two, no good. Chisholm again, up and no good. Gets his own rebound and is fouled. Coach Fenrick there for Bigfoot asking, boy, how many shots boy, are you gonna boy, give him? And you know, the only chance that you have with a uh, size disadvantage there is when Chisholm rebounds it. He's got it down low, you gotta get it there. Because you can't allow him to, because I mean, obviously with a height advantage, he's going to jump over the top of you, even be, from behind you. But as soon as he rebounds that thing, you got to get it right there if you're a smaller individual. Spartans, no hurry to shoot the ball here. Six and a half to go with a 24 point lead. Schwarting, Tenius. And what is it, John? It's Friday night. December the 21st, 2018. If this is still airing in 10 years. Yep, 10 years, 20 years. Hope to still be alive to be maybe looking back at this from the nursing home that I'll be in someday saying, Jeepers, was that really me talking? Huh? Worse yet, people might be saying, geez, they used to have sports in high school. Oh uh, yeah, that's... Folks, those days will come when we won't have that. I'll be shipped out. Part of it'll be uh, we're running out of officials too, and that that could come first. Yeah, that's a sad statement, but a true statement. Those yeah. numbers continue to plummet. 
course, when you come out here and take the abuse that you do, Witter over to Tenius. Daniel tries to save it. I believe you've heard and taken the brunt of that sitting at the scorer's table, huh, John, as you heard the oh, 100, yeah, or so, 100 or so officials that sit up in the stands at every game. That And I'm not even on our side. <laughs> I mean, it's... It got ugly one night, that's that's for sure. Which is a shame that you even have to say that. Nice thing is now I, I don't hear any of that, and, and, and I don't miss it. I hear it at middle school games, though, doing the clock, and that's frustrating. Courier rounding out no good. Of course, I was probably one of the worst at treating officials when I coached, so I've mellowed as I've aged. <laughs> like cheese. Courier, the lefty, gets the roll. Soft touch. TJ's had a pretty good game here tonight in the absence of his cohort, Logan Eyshide. They both average almost 18 points a game, and as soon as they say that, he misses the free throw. It's Trayvon leading the break. Underneath, Pavlik, Schwarting to the basket. Knocked away, gets his own rebound, kicks it out. Trayvon, oh, and it hangs on the rim, but they're not going to call hanging on the rim here. They're going to call the foul on Foster. Trayvon got whistled once before this year for that. There was a big technical in the East Troy game. Yeah, tough one to call at that point in the game, but Ah, there you can see Trayvon. He's got to be up over 20 for the night, Four, isn't he, Bill? Six. Hits them both. 18 points. Well, he's getting there. Seven deuces and four out of seven from the stripe. The lead is 26. The Spartans continue to press full court. Not as intense. They kind of drop it back a little bit here, Jen. Foster. This would be a nice win for the Spartans heading into uh, Christmas break. And knowing, like you said, December 28th, boy, that is going to be a major challenge against the Silver Eagles over in Monona. Courier on the follow, doesn't go. Ball out of bounds, will go to McFarland. That'll be a good matchup. Spartans have played Stoughton this year in their opener and picked up the win. Badger South, pretty balanced. Monroe goes up and beats MG and. Yep. Hey, we're gonna get a look here at a few other players here. Schwarting. Miller. Mr. Miller, AM and the PM, likes to play all day. The Mosquito, Ethan Nichols, he's just gonna bug you all day long. Pistol Pete Pavlik can be instant offense. And a steal for Bigfoot. Brian Semin, the only Spartan yet to see action, but. Saw Brian in the hallway. He works with me out at the Oaks Golf Course. I was telling him I'd hope he'd get in so I could give him a little time tonight. Nice job by Courier there. He got the ball high and just kept it high. When you're 6'7", that's pretty tough to defend. Right. 65-41. Four minutes to go here. That's Ethan Nichols, number three. And Spartans will move it around the perimeter here. Austin Miller. Schwarting on the drive, no good. Gillingham's got it, up ahead to Greco. Greco. Oh man, a battle all the way down the floor. Nichols gonna be whistled for the foul. Greco brings that ball out with the right arm, like going up with it. Yeah. Well, I mean, Greco and Nichols, that was three-fourths of the floor. Remember, side Greco was a tough kid in football, by, yeah. if I remember. Yep. Good athlete. I want to say he caught a long pass. I remember, right? One season tends to blend into the next. Yeah, John, next, I, so. I can't remember what I had for dinner two hours ago, <laughs> so trying to remember that would be a little challenging. Greco two out of four from the free throw line and three Hits out of both. five. 
They go with two trays and a hoop. Eight, he's at 11 points on the evening, three over his eight point season average. Winner shot blocked by Greco. Bigfoot, they'll keep playing hard till the end. You better, these are precious times, precious minutes. You're never gonna get them back, John. What was it on that form that Megan Jansen filled out? Max Hansen on the basket for your uh, surveys. Something about always remember why you started playing or something like that, you know, oh, when it was yeah. for fun. Just... And do you do those for the boys too? Yes. I was just really however, impressed with the girls. Uh, however, John, I did not receive any of them back. From the boys? No. Nope. And it uh, comes a point in time when you say, do I hunt them down or are you gonna be responsible? If you would like those put out, I guess you'd be responsible and you can get them back to me. And if not, I'm not gonna chase you down for them, the girls. For the most part, I didn't get them back from all the girls either, but. Um, well, it looks like the bus driver for Bigfoot's headed out to the. Uh, <laughs> get her warm. Well, I'm, I'm gonna just guess that that was the gentleman heading out. Second free throw, no good. Chisholm high for the board. Yeah, the girls just really did a nice job. Uh, Didn't they with those some out. of their answers? Oh, yeah. Max Hansen, no good. Chisholm with a rebound around and in. Boy, Chavon has gotten probably eight boards. Yep. Are you a little surprised he's still in the game, John? Eight boards offensively. I'd hate to have him get hurt up 25. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, I, you know. And number one, Brian Semin in. Brian Semin, and the commander, representing the Oaks Golf Course. Why the commander? Because if you ever saw him at a football game, he's a cheerleader with a captain's hat on, a commander's hat. He likes to wear and be kind of head cheerleader at the football game, so I had a kick at him. He's always funny working out the Oaks Golf Course because whenever I saw him, I'd say, good afternoon and welcome Spartan fans to the Oaks Golf Course. I'd always give him a little shot. He'd always get a kick out of that. He said he enjoys watching the telecasts and that. So give him a little shout out here. And two games ago, he actually threw in a deuce, but we weren't doing that game that night. And so I told him, I said, hey, please throw one in here tonight. Maybe even a three ball so I can go kaboom for seven. <laughs> that Bigfoot will take a timeout. Hey, John, one quick factoid here. Got to throw one of these in too. The first college men's game ever played was on January 18th, 1896. Final score, Iowa 15, the University of Chicago 12. Probably that would have been. Well, that boy, would have been the uh, ball would go in the basket that they'd have to take the ball out. Right, it was like a literal basket, to. right? It's, <laughs> it's like the days when they had the I jump think the balls. Peach basket, I think the peach basket didn't have the bottom cut out. No, so. and I think uh, late into the 30s, they did the jump balls after every made basket. So teams with taller players tended to just dominate. Yep. Got a couple of interesting quotes here too. How do you like this quote? Coach said, you know what? I never lost a game. I just ran out of time. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep, yeah, it does. And second free throw by Greco is good. 69-45. Again, Bigfoot going to play hard all the way to the oh, end here. Oh, they're throwing some full court pressure at the McFarland Reserves here. And the Spartans will have to make that trip down to Walworth later in the season. Good ball movement here, yep. Schwarting, oh, beautiful up and under movement. Just couldn't finish it. Look at Derek. Schwarting oh, on the trampoline here. Just short armed it. Tie up. Yeah, I believe we still have to play Turner, Clinton, and Jefferson to complete the nine game first half. First half, yep. I don't know how I feel about 18 conference games out of 22, yeah. but especially when then you'll go to uh, regionals and 
you've hardly played anybody in your in your regional right. or sectional. Not a lot of scores to compare seedings and other stuff with. Yeah, the January 8th ball game will be done by myself and my son, Brett Cather, who will be back here from Columbia. So I told him I could put him on a telecast. He usually enjoys doing one a year. And seven, oh, seven. almost. Oh. Almost. That would have made the highlight real. Yep. Shot on Whoa. the way by Greco, rolls oh, and rolls is. and goes out. Wasn't a lot of arc on that shot. It's coming right to Bill. Bigfoot brings in Brand Braden Buckholtz, Nolan Gossi. Boy, both teams going full court, still press here, John. Yeah, it's. <laughs> Wow, up 24, and you're going to get a foul. Well, if you're going to press, you're going to risk getting the foul. Yep, and extend the game. Keeps the fans in their seats a little longer. And us on the mic a little bit longer, so. I gives, it, the, gives that bus driver a little more time to warm up that bus out there for that long trip back to Walworth. Well, you got to go to Janesville and take 14. Or again, Bigfoot made up of what are the other communities, John? It's actually Sharon three or four K-8 districts: Walworth, Fontana, Sharon, and I believe there's another. It's a Union. I believe it's a Union High School. Shot on the way is good by Pete Pavlik for three. Pistol Pete. And a steal on the press. Summit. Oh. Everybody here would like to see Brian get a hope. Triple teamed underneath is not a good spot for him. He's going to get fouled. Nope. Oh, they got it to him. Oh, ooh. Ouch. Nielsen and Semin go down hard. Yep. Boy, I didn't see what happened because it the monitor kind of blocked to get it. Summon. They're trying to get Brian some points here tonight. You know, he's one of those kids too that works hard to practice and probably does all the little things. And so when you get him in here, it's nice if you can. Nice to see everybody rooting for him and try and get a little reward with some points. Aaron and Nielsen's free throw is wide no right, Not wide to the right. That one's good. 72-47. Chiefs will pick up in the backcourt. Let's see if they can get it over to the commander. Let him get one more shot at it. Not gonna happen and they're gonna just sit with it. And again, John, I'll let you put the final wrap on it. But again, a big thank you out here again to the mastermind, Andrew Day on the board tonight. Excellent graphics along with Patrick Hasty and up on the cameras, smiling Ryan Denzer and Steve and Shelley's favorite daughter, the queen, Stephanie Miller. So again, John, I'll let you put a wrap on it. Sep or December the 21st, 2018, McFarland High School. Go ahead, John. And I can't tell you when we're gonna be back here. It might be, I think it is January 8th. Might be, yep. Yeah. Well, this one in the books, a win for the Spartans. Got a win to keep pace here in the uh, Rock Valley. Yeah, they came East in Troy fifth undefeated. Place yeah, and yeah. three teams with one loss. Right. So, yep. got to keep winning.
Got a tough schedule ahead of you. They'll be back in action next Friday night. If you get a chance, head on over to Monona Grove. Make that five-minute trip. Girls and boys. Yep, double header. Double varsity ball games there. So. so for Bill Cather, I'm John Wells saying thanks for watching. Our final score tonight, McFarland 72, Bigfoot 47. So long, everyone.